Mmm. It's good stuff. Pineapple. Okay. As you may have noticed from my social media feeds, I am no longer shooting with the Canon EOS R7. The camera that I have learned to love along this year, a bit over a year that I have been shooting with it, and the camera that has boosted my creativity and my content to a whole new level. I have now officially switched to Sony, and in this video I will be going through a little bit of the reasons why this happened, so let's go. On a boat. Hey, Andres, where are you going? I'm, I'm going forward. Following <laughs> this car, I have no idea where we're heading. He's following the tourists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, on a boat. <laughs> For the longest of time, I was a Canon shooter. And not just because I would be a Canon fanboy, but because Canon matched my needs as a photographer and as a creator. For a bit over a year, I have been shooting with the Canon EOS R7 and I have tested plenty of different cameras from the Canon mirrorless lineup, including the Canon EOS R5, which is said to be the best hybrid camera out there. And that is no lie. Canon cameras are still amazing. But during this time shooting with the Canon EOS R7, I noticed that the gear was starting to limit my creativity. And not just the camera alone, but the overwhelming price of good quality lenses. As it is well known, with Canon cameras you are tied to the RF mount or to the older EF mount with the EF RF adapter. And I was happy with that. I was happy with the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8 art combined with the Canon EOS R7 and I got fantastic results out of it. That for me was never the big issue. But as the hunger grows and you start to set your bar to your own content constantly higher and higher, things start to change. I wanted to boost the production value of my content, create better looking content, create even more sharp photos, and I simply noticed that I had outgrown the capabilities of the Canon EOS R7 as a creative. So I started looking for something else. Of course the Canon EOS R5 was an option there because it is an amazing camera, but through the time that I had the camera for testing, even though it is a good camera, I noticed that it, it, it just was not good for me. It was not as good as I hoped. The Ibis wobble issue was still there and the RF lenses, they are super expensive and they are the only ones that you basically could use with that camera. And to be honest, if I was going to spend $4,000 on a camera body, I would not feel comfortable being crippled with the EF RF adapter so that I could use the older lenses. And as I still am a budget first creative, the price of the camera alone was way beyond my budget. Because if something would have happened to that camera, I would not have been able to replace it. And that is one of the guidelines that I have whenever I'm buying new gear that you need to be able to replace the camera or the lens if something happens to it. Like, just like that, without the new camera or the new gear breaking the bank. So that basically ruled the Canon EOS R5 and the entire Canon mirrorless lineup out of the equation. During the end of 2023, I tested the Sony a7 III. Now, a7 III is an older camera, but the photos that I got with it, even when I was using the cheap Sony 28mm f2, they were amazing. They just looked absolutely fantastic. And even though a7 III shoots just 8-bit video, I found the color correction process and the color grading process of that footage really simple. It it got me by surprise again, even though I have been editing footage from Sony FX30 many times before. It still got me by surprise. So I started thinking, would switching to Sony be the right way to go? Of course the fact that my good friend and co-creator Andreas Sippus has been using his Sony FX30 for the longest of time and just recently switched to Sony a7 III and my other good friend Leo Manniste also switching from Canon EOS R8 to Sony FX30 it, it, it played a huge part. We do a lot of content together and the amount of cooperations is only going to increase in the future. So Sony started to feel like 
the best way to go. And when it comes to lenses, as you know, I've been using the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 art almost exclusively for the entire year. And Sigma also has a budget-friendly 24-70 f2.8 art in their lineup for Sony. So the decision was made. The pros of Sony outnumber the cons big time and the cons of staying with Canon and switching to the R5 were beyond my control because of the budget. For a little while I was thinking that should I keep the Canon EOS R7 for photography and get the FX30 for making videos but again that plan stumbled because of the money that I can spend on my gear and to be honest I have been a hybrid shooter for the longest of time and carrying two different systems, one for video and one for photo, that seemed like a bit of a too big haul. And as I had already tested out the a7 III and I absolutely loved it, I was looking into the a7 IV. And with everything that the a7 IV packs into that little body, the decision was made. I was going to get the Sony a7 IV. That would be my new camera. So I traded in my Canon EOS R7 and all the gear and lenses that I had for it to get the Sigma 16-28 f2.8 and the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 art and pulled the trigger on the Sony a7 IV. I have now been shooting with this combination for about two weeks now and we went to Norway with guys for four days to create content and take photos and the more and more time passes I feel that this was this camera was the best choice for me at this point of my career. The results I get from this camera with the combination of those two Sigma lenses, they are just amazing. Now, just to make things clear, I'm not sponsored by Sony and I'm not sponsored by Sigma like I was not sponsored before by Canon. But when the gear that I buy and when the gear that I use is good, I want people to know my opinions about them because I know that there are plenty of people all the time around the world thinking about buying a new camera and thinking about upgrading their lenses and doing all this. So if any of these videos help those guys out, help you guys out, then I'm happy to do them. Then I'm happy to tell my opinion about the gear that I use. The Canon EOS R7 is still without a doubt a great camera. I just outgrew it. I wanted more. I just wanted more from my gear and I wanted to move forward instead of staying still. And the circumstances and the future plans that I have for my channel and my content creation just led me to pull the trigger on the Sony. Now, this was just an announcement. There will be plenty of content coming about the Sony a7 IV and about all the lenses that I now get to test with this camera in the future because I am no longer limited by the RF mount. I will also be building a full cinema rig around the a7 IV, so stay tuned for all of that, all of those goodies, all of those good things that are about to come on this channel. But as an underlining statement, without a doubt, the Sony a7 IV is the best camera that I have ever shot with and it is the best camera that I have ever had the privilege of owning. That's all I have for you guys for this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you have not done so already. If you got any questions, any comments, just drop them down below. As you know, I will be responding to them as soon as I can. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, oh I know what that's for. It's for the board meeting. <laughs> it's Tuesday morning and it's for the board meeting. Yeah. It's, oh. for board. it's for the board meeting. I mean, look at it. It's a beautiful board, isn't it? And you decided out of everything you can pick as a souvenir yeah. from here, you're bringing a board. Yeah, I'm bringing a board.